Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now after paying just over £50 or $65 US dollars or €60 Euros for this X workstation setup and retrieving it from the quote safe and secure location the courier had dropped it in, I was excited to take a look inside and explore the specifications. After all the Z400 from HP here is a 6 core 12 threaded Intel Xeon based machine and for the price it sounds like very good value for money. Sure it's missing a hard drive and half of the external enclosure but I see a lot of restoration potential. How did the seller lose the front of the case though, seriously? Before considering or contemplating any upgrade paths, I wanted to establish what exactly we were working with. First things first, and to quote Owen Wilson, Wow. This thing is clean. First, making an appearance around late 2009, the Z400 workstation could be configured with differing specs, but you were probably looking at over $1,000 any which way you look at it. The component that grabbed my attention online was of course the 12 threaded Xeon, so seeing what that could do was my first priority. The GoTo Cinebench R20 test was up first. By now, I've had time to update this with other scores from various CPUs, so we should be able to get a good idea of what this first quarter 2010 processor can do. You can pick these up for about £5, which is extraordinary really, but the 1366 socket requirement puts a slight damper on any hopes of picking up a cheap motherboard to pair it with. Unless of course you go for an HP or Dell OEM one. After the test completed I found multi-threaded wires, the Xeon seems to be close to an i5-2500K at stock speeds, so buying one of those may seem like the better idea. The single thread result doesn't bear talking about, seriously my laptops, albeit very poor, battery ran out before this test completed, the very laptop that was recording this lengthy endeavour. But here's the thing. While some may consider this a bottom of the barrel 6 core chip, it does still do an okay job in video editing, and as a workstation that's a nice accolade to maintain. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure an i5-2500K would do just as good, but for a £5 or $10 US dollar CPU, this will allow any budding content creators out there on a tight budget to get started. My Z400 also has 8 gigs of RAM, which could be increased and should be really if you wanted one of these to make videos with, but it'll do for now. The real issue though is the graphics card. Oh how it upsets me. The Nvidia NVS295 makes the GeForce 210 look like a GTX 1080, and while it didn't hold us back too much when it came to CPU intensive tasks or challenges, if you should ever want to take a break from editing and play some games on a machine like this, then this is certainly not a card you want to be in your machine. As I tried a few games, I didn't really bother too much about recording averages, 1% lows and such, because I could probably use a blanket unplayable rating across the board. And the games that look fine, for example Oblivion that seems to get 60 FPS on occasion, it was such a stuttery mess that I would deem it unplayable as well. What is reassuring though is that the processor was barely being utilised at all throughout the tests, meaning it has plenty more to give. Now these are older games, fair enough, because that's all the NVS with its 256MB of GDDR3 VRAM could handle, but a super low CPU usage like this means that we should be able to pair it with a much more powerful graphics card. I honestly didn't know what to expect from the E5645, it could have maxed out usage wise for all I knew going into this, but we'll have to see how it benefits from being paired with a better GPU a little later down the line. Upgrading this machine is certainly possible, and a lot of you have been wanting to see another Xeon build, so we'll have to see what can be done, but one thing's for certain, there is some level of potential here. As it is, this bargain workstation can still handle itself in tasks like video editing, despite the awful GPU, but you'll have to wait for the upgrade video before I can tell you whether or not I would recommend this thing as a good starting point for those getting into either video editing or other types of content creation on a tight budget. I do apologise for the shorter videos and bigger gap between them recently. I am moving house at the end of the week and as you can imagine I've had very little time to do much. I should be able to pick up again very soon. 
after all the move is sorted. It's always a pain when you move. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed what is, I guess, part one of this video. If you did, leave a like on it. Let me know if you have one of these in your system and whether you still use it on a daily basis. Of course, be sure to leave a dislike on this video if you didn't enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very, very soon.